after he was living in Dwarka for more than 50 years, separation from the bridge Basis, uh, how they were dying in separation mood, uh, how their hearts were completely uh, devastated and inundated with these moods of Vipra Lakhma But after Krishna had completed uh, his pastimes in Dwarka, and after he had uh, killed Dantavakra, then he came here to Braj, and again he met with the British Vasis. There is a local village called Ayare, Gram, and it is described in Sri Bhakti Ratnakara by Narahari Akur that when uh, Krishna was coming and the British Vasis uh, were now going to witness that Krishna was coming to them, they began to very loudly call out from the core of their hearts, Ayare, Ayare, Kandariya, Kandariya, Ayare, Ayare. Oh, Kandariya is coming, Kandariya is coming. And in this way they greeted him, and they surrounded him, and embraced him. And very beautiful meeting took place between the British Vasis and Krishna in this area here. So those pastimes are deeply embedded within the dust particles of this place. Also, Nauta Bihar, the beautiful pastimes of uh, playing both Leela took place here. The gopis used to carry so many beautiful golden pots filled with butter, filled with yogurt, and when they came to the river Jamuna, they wanted to cross, and who was waiting at the river Jamuna? One boat man was waiting with the boat. But who is the boat man? Krishna himself. And when Krishna wants to his mother, and as they came into the middle of the uh, Jamuna, oh, then the boat man told, oh, now my boat is very, very old and rickety, and there is water coming in, some holes. So we must, somehow or other, we must make the boat much lighter, much lighter. So you have to throw out the heavy weight that you have brought on the boat. So take all of your pots full of yogurt and butter, throw them across, throw them out of the boat. And the gopis, they became very durable. Oh, boat man, oh, boat man, we will do as you tell. So they threw out. And then the boat man told, no. But now, still, it is very, very heavy still. I think you have too many heavy ornaments that you are wearing. Now you must take them off and throw them out into the waters. And now they began to take all their ornaments and throw them out into the waters. And then finally, the boat that was telling, no, I think that your clothing is too much heavy, you should also take this. And now, the gopis, they began to lament, no, no, boatman, we cannot do this. And then Shimati Radhika pulled the boatman, and then she understood, oh, this is not a boatman, this is my, my Priya Priyatama. So, hey, ayore, ayore, ayore.
वहाँ पर राधा जी ने कृष्ण से मान कर लिया वे मान करके रूट करके जमुना पार होकर यहाँ एकांत कुंज कानन में आ गई यहाँ आकर राधा जी बिरल में बैठ इसका नाम मान सरोवर हुआ है
ভক্তের ফলন লীলায় ভক্তি রক্ষণ ভক্ত বাচ্চল ধর্মকে জগতে তুলে ধরেছেন কৌমার লীলা কৈশোর লীলায় তিনি এখানে যে সমস্ত লীলা করেছেন এরপর অন্য বক্তা আপনাদেরকে সেই লীলার was a huge huge banyan tree here which had uh, branches that extended in all directions and even the cowherd boys used to play on it and they used to even cross the river jamuna that was flowing nearby to here by uh, walking across the branches so so many cowherd leelas took place here and so many meetings of radha and krishna with the gopis also took place here this particular leela stali is very much uh, revered and very much loved by our Srila Gurudev. So you see, uh, years ago when we came here with Srila Gurudev, there was no platform here, only some very rough cement platform. But Srila Gurudev personally sponsored that this leela stali should be established as you see it now with a very beautiful marble uh, platform and also the altar erected here which is depicting the uh, Gandharva marriage of Radha and Krishna which we will tell about. So this Bandir Vat uh, is the setting of so many cowherd leelas because in this area it was very very beautiful, so many beautiful green grasses, lush green grasses for all the cows and the calves and all the cowherd boys used to play here and this was also a, a point uh, of uh, transferring the, uh, sending the lunches which all the Krishna is sitting with me personally, he's taking prasadam with me, so this is the mystery potency of Krishna because he is the supreme absolute and the absolute is the supreme center of all existence and where there is the center there is no circumference because the center is everywhere situated so another pastime that is celebrated here in this place is the Gandharva marriage of Radha and Krishna but actually there is one Leela which took place and it is like the playful like when little boys and girls they play marriage like this so one day Nanda Maharaj was here in near, near to this area and this whole area was surrounded by very very dense forests and kunjas so Nanda Maharaj was with little Krishna and at that time suddenly very dark clouds came across the sky and he saw that a storm a very powerful storm was imminent that was just about to come and inundate the area so he was he put Krishna in his lap and covered him to protect the nation. Oh Vishapana Dandini, Shimati Radharani suddenly appeared there at that place in front of him. And she was decorated from head to foot with very beautiful decorations. And he stood there in amazement looking at her, and she just held out her hand and indicated that she would take Krishna to a safe position if the storm was coming. So Nanda Maharaj gave Krishna into the hands of Shivati Radharani, like a like little boy and little girl together. And then, at that time, she brought him into the very dense forest area surrounding this Bandir Vat, this very place where there was this huge Banyan tree. So as they came into this area, then suddenly Krishna manifested his Manmata Manmata form. His most attractive of all cupids, the attractor of the attractor of millions of cupids, Krishna looked like this. Then Shrimati Radhika also manifested her Kishori form. And then Lalita and Vishaka arrived there, and they were also in their very beautiful teenage forms. And then, at that time, Lord Brahma himself came down here, and he performed the Gandharva marriage ceremony. That means exchanging of garlands. Because the Vedic system, the uh, boy and girl, their marriage is arranged by the parents of either family, but not how the marriage, there is no arranging. It is simply by its mutual attraction. And the, and the, uh, the means by which this is exchanged is simply by exchanging garments. So that's also so many beautiful, sweet pastimes, Ras Lila, and so many others. And I request Shripad or on your hands here, especially one day, Krishna was with his coward friends and the cows, they were wandering away.
from Krishna and his friends. His friends said, don't worry, we'll go and bring them back. So the friends went to search out for the cows. But what happened? Kamsa had sent some demons to this place and they lit a fire in the forest. And this forest fire surrounded all the cows and all the friends also. And they were encircled by forest fire. In a few moments it seemed that all were going to be finished, all would die. So they were weeping and they called to Krishna, Oh Krishna, please save us. So at that time Krishna said, close your eyes. So then all the coward boys, they closed their eyes. And Krishna, when he saw that their eyes were closed and they were not looking, because before he was eating dirt and when they saw him eating dirt they complained to Mother Yashoda. So if they see him eating fire, then what will they tell her? She will become angry. She said, close your eyes. So they closed it. when he was sure all had closed their eyes, then Krishna, he drank the whole forest fire. And then when the boys opened their eyes again, they discovered what? Oh, they were not very far away in the midst of all burnt forest which had been extinguished, but rather they found themselves again back here underneath this tree as if nothing had happened. As if nothing had happened at all. Like a miracle. That time the boys thought to themselves, what happened? How did Krishna do that? There was flames and smoke and fire everywhere. Now there's nothing and we had gone very far away and we were lost and in danger and now we are back here. How did Krishna do that? So they're all thinking to themselves, maybe Krishna is a demigod. Could be a demigod. So then they were thinking to themselves, but we're his friends and we wrestle with him, we can defeat him even. Maybe, maybe we're all demigods. So all the boys became very happy, <laughs> speculating in this way. Oh. So Krishna performed many sweet pastimes here. But here you know that the word go, go means cow. But go also means senses. When the cows, they turned away from Krishna, then they wandered into the forest and became lost. So in the same way, when the jiva turns away from Krishna, then he wanders into the forest of material enjoyment. But does he enjoy in that forest? No. What happens? Fire. Fire comes in. And he simply suffers. But when the living entity cries out, Oh Krishna, please save me. Then very easily, Krishna, he delivers the living entity from the blazing fire of material existence. And brings him into his eternal pastimes in Vrindavan. How? By action of Yogamaya. This place is called Pandirvan. Pandirvan. Pandir means the banyan tree. But here, she could have explained. Ha. Pan means illumination. In other words, by the illumination of Yogamaya, Krishna reveals his eternal pastimes here. We have heard how the wedding of Radha and Krishna took place here, it seems. It was evening time and Nandapa was walking here in, the, in this area in the forest with Krishna as a small boy. And what happened? The great dark dense clouds assembled in the sky. This pastime has been described in Brahma Vaivarta Puran. And also a hint of this pastime has been given by Sri Jaidev Goswami. Mekai Mekanamam Ram Avanabhuvah Shama Samala Drumai Naktam Viruram Tadeva Tadidam Radhe Griham Prapaya Itam Nandana Jai Sachas Salitayas Patvajja Kunja Drumam Radha Madhavayo Jayanti Yamuna Kulei Raha Kelaya Megar Megaram Baram Very dark clouds assembled in the sky Naksam Biru Am And Krishna as a small boy he became afraid When Nanda Maharaj saw that Radhika was coming Then he put Krishna Krishna's hand in the hand of Radhika They were small children And said Griham Prapaya You should take him home Take him to Griha no, hmm? But Radhika brought Krishna where? Here. Hmm? This is not a griha, this is what? Kunja griha. 
to the Kunja Griha. In Kunja Griha there is Grihini, that means Kunjashri, Shimati Radhika. By the influence of Yogamaya, both became in their Kishori forms. Sakis appeared in their Kishori forms. And Brahmaji, he came and he told them to utter the mantra, Yadidam Ridayam Tava, Tadidam Ridayam Mama. In this way, Radha and Krishna uttered the mantra, My heart is your heart, your heart is my heart. And they exchanged garlands. And in this way, their wedding was done. Oh, only in the mood of joke, playing. But Brahma was also playing. And then, in a moment, they again they became small and they returned to their homes. So, this pastime is not to prove that Radha and Krishna are married. No. This pastime is to show us that the Kishore, go for Vesha Veno Kara, Nava Kishore Nathamara. Krishna is eternally present in Vrindavan. His original eternal form is his Kishore group. And the Kishore Lila of Radha and Krishna, as Yuga Kishore, is always going on. But sometimes it is Prakat manifest, and sometimes a Prakat becomes unmanifest. So here, one day, Krishna was sitting in his Bandaravat and playing with so many friends. They do their Bojan Lila here. They hang their tiffins on the trees and climb in the trees. Sometimes Krishna and his friends, they'll take some neem pata, neem leaves, bitter things, and take the inside out of a pakora and put that inside. And they say, oh, these pakoras are very good. And Madhu Bhaga, these are very good. Give it to me. No. Madhu Bhaga will snatch by force. And then quickly eat it. But then when he begins to eat, what happens? Taste is very, very bitter. That time, Madhu Bhaga has a joke, he becomes very angry. Huh? Oh, you've made an offense to a brother. This is a very severe offense. I'll go to Mathura, I'll tell Kamsa, he'll give you a punishment. And in this way, all the boys are playing together. One day, Krishna was sitting here beneath this tree, and he was smiling. Very boldly smiling and thinking to himself. At that time, some sakis of Radhika, they came. Krishna, why are you smiling? What are you thinking of? Krishna said, I am remembering my heroic pastimes here. Oh, you are a big hero. Yes. I wrestle with my friends. Who can wrestle with me? I am so expert at wrestling. Shaki said, Oh, Sridham, Radhika's brother, he can defeat you. He said, No, no. I can defeat Sridham. Don't you know I have defeated Putana, Adasur, Bakasur, Srinavata, many, many demons. I have defeated so many. Gopi said, Oh, you cannot do anything. We know why you have defeated these demons. Why? Because our Swamini Radhika, she has a benediction from Durvasa Rishi. If anyone will eat what she has cooked, they cannot be defeated by anyone. So you have not defeated demons. Our Swamini's cooking has defeated them. In this way, they laughing and joking with Sri Krishna. Then Sakis told Krishna, you think that you're a hero, you can wrestle with anyone? But if you can wrestle with our Swamini, then we believe that you're a hero. But we think that you cannot even last for one minute. You don't last one minute against Shimati Radhika. So then Krishna agreed, yes, we will have Malla Yudha, wrestling match. So then, Krishna went away, Sakis went away, and they informed all their friends. And then in this place, the day was fixed for the wrestling match. And they decorated this place with so many flags and festoons and made a very nice wrestling arena. And all the friends of Radhika, all Sakis and Gopis, they came and were assembled here. So many, more than all of you. Many, many Gopis came. And many cowherd boys, they also came here. And they're waiting for the wrestling match. So then, Krishna, he came. He had his coach with him, Madhu Manga. Madhu Manga was getting Krishna ready for the, for the match. So when Krishna came here, Radhika had come with Lalita and Vishaka, but they did not bring Radhika to the wrestling arena. They kept her in a kunj nearby. And they dressed her very beautifully, like a wrestler, with cloth like this, up like this. Very nicely decorated. And they covered her face with a veil, so that no one could see her face. 
So when Krishna was coming to the wrestling arena, then the fragrance of Radhika was coming through the air. When Krishna smelled the fragrance of Radhika, then uh, he started to tremble. Bhagavan Mano said, Krishna, why are you afraid? You have done so much wrestling before. You have defeated so many demons, why are you trembling? But Krishna could not say anything. So then Krishna was trembling and he came into the wrestling arena. Then Lalita and Vishaka, they put Radhika with her face covered by a veil. Then when Lalita and Vishaka, they put Radhika in front of Krishna with her face covered by a veil. At that time, Krishna's legs began to wobble like this. Madhu Mago was helping him to stand up. Lalita Saki began to abuse Krishna. In the Rupa Goswami part, he wrote in his Tavamala how Lalita Saki was abusing Krishna. Hey Krishna, what kind of hero are you? Huh? What to speak of fighting with your opponent? Only seeing your opponent. Huh? Your mouth has become dry. Sweat is coming from your forehead. Your body is trembling. Your legs are shaking. What kind of hero are you? Madhu Mango was saying, Krishna, pull yourself together. She's just a girl. She's only a girl. What's wrong with you? So then they came face to face in the wrestling arena. And just then, Lalita Saki, she took off Radhika's veil like this, and Radhika, she looked at Krishna from the corner of her eye. There and then, Krishna. <laughs> Oh, when will I have the opportunity to engage in the service of Radhika's lotus feet? She's so full of rasa. Only by the arrow of her glance, Krishna takes and falls to the ground unconscious. That time, Madhu Mangal, he was trying to bring Krishna back into sense. It was a matter of great embarrassment for all of Krishna's friends. But Radhika Saki, they were overjoyed. So every day you are singing. Ananga Ranga Mangala Sasanga Bandhu Rabhuvam Savipamam Sasambramam Rigata Panapatana Nirantara Vatikritam Vatikinanda Nandane Kadaka Vishra Siyamam Then we went to Rangsala of Kamsa. But this is Rangsala of Radhika, that is Anangaranga. Hmm? Anangaranga, the wrestling arena of Kande, where love is prominent. Anangaranga Mangala Prasanga Bangura Brahman. And only by the sidelong glance of Radhika. Lirantaram Vasikrisham Pratiti Nandanandane. In a moment, Nandanandan Sri Krishna. Hmm? Sabhiprama, he becomes bewildered and thanks. They are praying, Kadakari Sisiyama, Ipaka Taksha Bhajana. Or when, at that time, when Radhika is victorious over Krishna, would she cast aside and glance towards me and give me an opportunity to render service to her Lord? Vishwamanu Nandini Shumatika Dikka Si Jai, Si Bandir Bala Ki Jai, Vrindavan Bihari Lala Ki Jai, Jai Jai Si. हाथी का मरण हुआ था और वो मरण तो होल करके फिर हाथी को मारना ही पड़ा।
स्वरूप को स्वामी कह रहे हैं भजन के लिए कौन सा स्थान सर्वोत्तम है ऐसे ब्रज में सर्वोत्तम सर्वत्र है सभी बाद बादश बन गोबन इत्यादि सभी श्रेष्ठ किंतु उन सब में कौन सा स्थान श्रेष्ठ है बैकुंठ जनितो बड़ा मधुपुरी तीन लोक में श्रेष्ठ बैकुंठ लोक श्रेष्ठ है ऐश्वर्यमय बैकुंठ धाम से भी श्रेष्ठ कृष्ण के जन्म के कारण मथुरा मंडल अधिकतर श्रेष्ठ है क्योंकि मथुरा में जन्म लिया मथुरा मंडल में भी रात उत्सव होने के कारण वृंदावन श्रेष्ठ है मथुरा में रास मंडल नहीं है जन, जन्म है वो भी आंशिक है इसलिए वृंदावन श्रेष्ठ है वृंदावन के एरिया में गोकुल श्रेष्ठ है और गोकुल से श्रेष्ठ नंदगांव बरसाना और फिर इधर में वृंदावन जहां रासोत्सव हुआ इसलिए वृंदावन से भी अधिक श्रेष्ठ कौन सी है कृष्ण के कर कमलों में कीड़ा करने वाले गोवर्धन गिरिराज की तलाटी श्रेष्ठ है गोवर्धन से भी श्रेष्ठ प्रेमामृत की वर्षा करने वाले राधा कुंड सबसे श्रेष्ठ है गोवर्धन के तट में विराजमान इस राधा कुंड का कौन सा विवेकी विवेक संपन्न व्यक्ति सेवन नहीं करेगा अभी तो अवश्य करना चाहिए ये रूप गोस्वामी की शिक्षा है Now in the ninth verse, Shri Rupa Goswami Pad gives the instruction, Vaikuntaj Janito Bara Madhupuri Chatra Pirat Sotsavad. That a question may arise: What is the best place to render service in all the three worlds? Vaikunta is superior to every place in the three worlds. It is transcendental, but that place is Aishwarya Dham, the place of opulence. So Vaikuntha Janito Bara Madhupuri, better than Vaikuntha is Madhupuri, Mathura Mandal. Why Janita? Because Krishna was born there. This indicates hmm, some human-like pastimes, and superior to Mathura Mandal. is vrindavan why vrindavan vrindavanam in the forest of vrindavan krishna performed rasa lila so that is superior and in the area of vrindavan govardhan is superior even to vrindavan and at govardhan the best place where prem the nectar of prem is overflowing that is called Radha Kund. So, what intelligent or discriminating person would not want to render service there in Radha Kund? You know, this is slow. Karma Das, ah, you can explain. Ah. <coughs> <coughs> 
Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha So the uh, tenth shloka of Sri Upadesha Amrita uh, is following the shloka which just, just described the hierarchy of the transcendental abodes of the Supreme Lord. So in this shloka, now Srila Rupa Goswami, he's describing the hierarchy of the devotees uh, within this world and in the transcendental world. He tells, Karmi Vyak Parito Hari Priyatayas Vyaktim Yayur Gyaninas Tebyo Gyan Vimukta Bhakti Parama Premaika Nishtas Tata Tebyo Tapa Shupala Panka Jadrishas Tabyo Pisa Radhika Prishta Tadvadiyam Tadiya Sharasi Tamna Tamna Shrayet Kakriti so first of all, Srila Rupa Goswami describes Karme Bhyak Parito Hare Priyataya. So within this material world, most of the Jiva souls are engaged in simply pursuing their external material desires for sense gratification. But amongst all of these fruitive workers within this world, karmis, some of them follow religiosity, dharma, so that they can attain higher conditions within this material universe, going to heavenly planets and enjoying a higher level of material happiness. So, those persons who follow the dharmic principles of this world, who accept the Vedic principles, even though their, uh, their goal is to achieve selfish uh, enjoyment, but still, on some level, they are dear, they are priya to the Supreme Lord. But higher than them are those persons who are called jnanis. Because the jnani has carefully analyzed the nature of this material world and he, real, and he has realized and understood clearly that there is nothing worthwhile within this world. Everything that can be achieved is temporary and ultimately it leads to suffering and misery. So that person, the jnani, now he endeavors for moksha, for liberation from this temporary material world and he applies himself very devotedly. So that person is somewhat higher than the fruitive worker, the karmi. Then, tebyo jnana vimukta bhakti parama premaika nishtastata. Then comes the jnana vimukta, uh, the persons who have actually taken to the pathway of bhakti and they have given up this pursuit for the impersonal jnana. Now they are trying to cultivate the pathway of pure devotion to the Supreme Lord. They are on a higher level than simply jnanis who are desiring the liberation from this world and, and the sayujya mukti. And bhakti parama premaika nishtas tata. So such personalities like the great personality Sri Narad Muni. They are pure bhaktas, shuddha bhaktas. They have no other desire than to completely satisfy Sri Krishna. Anakulyena Krishna Nushilanam. They are situated only in pure bhakti of the highest standard, pure prem bhakti. Tebhyas ta pashupala pankajadrishas ta pisa radhika. Now analyzing all these different levels of pure bhaktas, like Srila Gurudev has been uh, very clearly delineating on his touring throughout the world, the five different levels of bhaktas, like the Jnani Bhakta, the Shuddha Bhakta, the Premi Bhakta, the Prema Para Bhakta, and the Prem Atur Bhakta. Going through these different levels, from uh, Prahlad Maharaj, to Ambarish Maharaj, to Hanuman, to the Pandavas, and up to Uddhava. All these personalities are situated in, in the platform of pure bhakti. But above all of those, now Srila Rupa Goswami is describing in the entire creation uh, the 
devotees who are the topmost uh, intimate associates of the Supreme Lord. He describes them as punk, Pashupala Pankaja Drishas. Those personalities, the Braja Gopis, who are completely 100% dependent upon Krishna, and they know nothing else in their lives. They have given up everything to serve Krishna, even to the extent that Krishna himself has admitted, Naparayaham Nirabhadya Samyujam, that I am not able to repay you for your pure devotion and your pure bhakti. But amongst those, here Srila Rupa Goswami is very clearly pointing out, Pankajadrishas Tabyo Pisa Radhika Preshta she is Srimati Radharani. Amongst all the gopis, she is the topmost and the most dear to Krishna. Because it is only through her pure devotion that Krishna becomes completely 100% satisfied. And this was completely evident in the uh, Ras Lila when Srimati Radhika left out of Man. Today we have gone to Man Sarovara. And Srimati Radhika manifested this pastime of uh, some jealousy, feeling that the uh, other gopis were there, and Krishna was dealing with them equally to her. So with transcendental man, she left the rasa dance, and she came there to Man Sarovara. And by her separation mood, uh, she cried so many tears. And that Sarovara, that pond which we saw today, that is the very place where her tears filled and became a very beautiful Sarovara. So because Srimati Radhika left the Ras Lila, therefore Sri Krishna was not at all satisfied, even though there were millions and millions of highly qualified gopis who have this highest level of prem for Krishna. But yet Krishna felt, no, now there is, now the rasa, uh, the tasting of ras has gone down to a lower level. So then he himself left the Ras Lila and searched here and there and everywhere for Srimati Radhika. So Srila Rupa Goswami points out in this shloka that Preshta Tadvadiyam Tadiya Sarasi Tamnash Rayat Kakriti As he has told in the previous shlok, the highest transcendental abode of all abodes is Sri Radha Kunda. Because in that Sri Radha Kunda, Premam Rita Plavanat, this highest Unata Ujvala Premras, uh, that is felt by Sri Krishna for Srimati Radhika and that is felt by the Braja Gopis for Krishna. It is overflowing unlimitedly there in Radha Kunda. So here he is telling that now that Kundam, that Sarasi, anyone who is intelligent, anyone who is expert in the practice of bhajan, oh, who will not take shelter of that Sri Radha Kunda because it is the highest transcendental place. So for our favorable development of this pure Prem Bhakti which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come, Srila Rupa Goswami has beautifully pointed out in this Upadesha Amritam, the highest place where bhajan can be performed and those personalities who are the dearmost to Krishna in order to convince and explain to the sadhakas that this Radha Kund is the highest abode of taking shelter of and there our eternal good fortune lies. Guravi Gaur Chandraya Hindi te ye shlokar bhyakya karo Pradhikaya itadalaya Krishna ye Krishna bhaktaya Tad bhaktaya namu namaha Karmi bhya parito hare Priyataya ge jaju genina ज्ञान विमुक्ता प्रमयि कनेष्ठास्तत तिभ्यस्ता पशुपाल पंकज दृश साभ्योपि साराधिका प्रेष्टं तद्वादियं 
तदीय सरसी शिल रूप गोस्वामी पाद ने उपदेशा मृत के अंत में इस श्लोक में यह वर्णन किया है कर्मिभ्यो परितो हरे संसार में लोग कर ordinary people they think if i'll go there and take bath once then i'll get gopis prem but our shila bhakti siddhanta sazari thakur he himself even he did not take bath there and he explained that don't think that by taking bath once there that this prem will come this is not rupa goswami's uh, uh, consideration explained in this verse why because the Vrindavan Dham is a Chinmay, transcendental, aprakrta, supernatural. It is beyond the material nature. And therefore, by the material body, with the material intelligence, one cannot touch the aprakrta vastu, the transcendental substance. One cannot touch Radhakund even. So therefore, oh, the meaning is, if by aprakrta deha, by one's spiritual body, one will take bath in the spiritual Radhakund. Then this Radhakund will bestow upon one the highest prime, the loving service of the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. We see that our previous Acharyas, they used to come and take bath here, like Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. But he did not take bath to wash.